We're bringing you all the insights from Flame 2018 and the first day, the LNG conference. With me now is Svengen Stolle from the CEO of Herg LNG. Thank you very much for talking to us Thank here you. at Flame. Let's start with the LNG market as you see it. How would you characterize it? Well, I mean, if you look at uh, the big numbers, um, 2017, so the greatest increase in the overall market from probably last 10 years. So the market increased with uh, 12, 13%. So that's great. That's good for all of us that are, are in the LNG market because as the market grows, so does the pieces that we all uh, put into the market. Um, and I would say that um, I think this trend will definitely continue simply because there is still somewhere around 100 million tons of new production capacity that is being built, which will take the total market from 300 last year to 400 plus in a year and a half, mm -hmm. so 2020. Um, and that uh, will continue to drive the need for what we deliver, new efforts are used to import the gas, new ships. Uh, so I think the, the outlook um, is very, very promising. Mm. And, and geographically, I mean, you're in very many different areas. Yeah. I mean, which ones would you concentrate on or are you sort of anticipating concentrating on? Well, it's kind of hard um, to say only one area because, I mean, we operate FSIUs at the moment in six different countries mm. across the globe. Yeah. So, but I would say, though, that um, if you look at uh, the first quarter of this year, you see the same trend as we saw for the whole of 17, Asia. Asia is where the imports are increasing uh, the most, and certainly by far into China, into India, uh, Pakistan, uh, new, some of the new countries. Mm -hmm. So I believe that uh, we will continue to see the same development in Asia being in the forefront. Where do you see those imports as coming from, though? Well, that's, that's from anybody that has gas available. So there's not really, but clearly... Or oh, and wants to export and is seeing that yeah, as their yeah, preferred well, market. But I mean, the, the main producer is and will continue to be Qatar. Uh, but the fastest growth is now coming from the US and Australia. Mm. So those three will continue to, to dominate the market. Mm. We're hearing a lot already at Flame about how important new technology is at mm. sort of keeping production costs down and, and squeezing every little last bit. Yeah. And I just wonder, you know, your thoughts on that plus what you are doing as well with any technology to right. really, you know, keep the cost how you want them to be. Right. Well, to give you a bit of perspective, what we have done as Hergel NG for the FSIU side, First of all, what we've done with the <clears throat> FSIU is basically to disrupt the historical way of importing LNG, because that was to build a land-based facility. Nobody does that anymore. There's a few, but very few. So that market, we have basically taken what used to be a project that would take five, six years to build. We can now do it in six months. Um, and the cost, uh, the regas cost for an FSIU is less than half of what the land-based facility is. Uh, and we continue to improve on that. So in terms of technology, I think uh, what we have done in the FSIU segment is really to bring down the cost of importing LNG uh, to a very, very competitive level. Mm. Is there any more that you are working on at the moment yeah. to try and get it even further? Well, there is. I mean, we, if you look at uh, the first FSIU we ordered 10 years ago and the one we are building today, mm. the, the, what we are building today, it's larger, it's more efficient, and it's certainly much more, call it, uh, environmentally friendly. Uh, so we use um, less energy, uh, the footprint uh, is very, very small um, and obviously we've been able to improve how we use the energy to, 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 to operate the FSIU significantly mm. over this period. 
given all of that, do you see any competitors to yourself, more competitors coming into the market? Uh, we compete every day. Yeah, uh, sure. But yeah, and the list, uh, well, when we, when we basically created this market, we Hug did that together with two other companies, Accelerate and, and Golar. Uh, that list is longer today. So we've added uh, two, three more over the last uh, three, four years. But I mean, that's okay, and the market keeps growing. So in 10 years, you know, the market has gone from one FSIU to today 23. So, well, let's look forward to 10 more years then. Yeah. How and many? Well, certainly our, our aim would be we have a fleet of uh, 10 FSIUs today, so we are the biggest mm -hmm. in this segment. Uh, our ambition is definitely to continue to be the largest provider. Um, and uh, by that time, we should have at least double the fleet, maybe even more than that. So you'd be confident in saying 20 in 10 years? Yeah. Within 10 years or, mm. or after 10 years? Well, I mean, it takes two and a half years to build sure. one, right? So sure. having uh, in operation or under construction. Yeah. And do you think, I mean, I don't know whether you want to keep the same 10-year perspective, but I wonder what you think we will be talking about at Flame in, let's say, 10 years. Well, if you don't mind, I think 10 years is a bit too long. Well, fair <laughs> enough. We're, two, uh, three, I mean, it's... <laughs> well, I think um, there's going to be... Uh, some very large changes over the next two to three years. Okay. Simply because, and this is on the production supply side, simply because there has not been made any new investment decisions for building new LNG facilities now for more than two years. And when you know that it takes at least five, six years before those facilities are ready to start producing, I think People are saying the market is oversupplied. I, I totally disagree with that. Right. The market is long, yes, but the gas is being sold. If it was oversupplied, it wouldn't be sold. So as long as you are, as a seller, willing to accept the price, you will sell your gas. And that coupled with the fact that no new investment decisions have been made, for me it means that three, four, five years down the line, I think there will be a sharp uptick on the demand and maybe the gas won't be there. Do you, um, do you see then a change in contract length then? I think the, what has happened um, the last three, four years in particular is, number one, it's a buyer's market. And I don't see that changing for the next three, four, five years, no. There's too much capacity being built. And what has that done? That has basically dismantle the old model of Tokyo gas buying 4 million tons for 20 years. Nobody does that anymore. So the contracts are, they will be shorter, uh, the volumes will be smaller, mm -hmm. uh, and buyers will look to multiply where they buy from. And the market will give them that. And that's all good. Would you say interesting yeah. as well? Very interesting, yeah. yeah. Well, we will see what we are talking about next year, I'm sure. Thank you very much for talking to me Thank this you. morning. Thank you.